Welcome to Convenient Forum. My name is John Golitino. I'm your host. Uh, this evening, we're going to be talking to Al Robinson, who runs the Hat City blog. Uh, there's a, a number of things that are um, uh, coming up uh, that we're going to talk. This is his first time on Community Forum, and uh, we've been working on it for a while to get him here. So I want to welcome you to the show. Hey. This is great. It's, it's a pleasure. It finally coming along the great community <laughs> forum after all this time. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Um, what what started you blogging? You know, you, you moved to town and saw a few things you needed to blog about. Yeah, or? well, um, yeah. before the Hat City blog website, I actually did a site called Connecticut Blog, and it's a progressive blog that followed local politics, oh, state government, state politics. And um, while I was doing that, I said, you know, maybe I should start checking out what's happening here in Danbury because you read the News Times and I can't find anything happening in Danbury in the Danbury News Times. So um, I attended a, a forum that was done by the mayor one day uh, at the Broadview Middle School back in 2005. I'll never forget this. And the, the topic of immigration came up and he was talking about how, you know, the, the undocumented immigrants are having to drain on our city services. And I mentioned to the mayor, I said, can you give me some examples of, of what specific uh, city services are being drained? Because you're saying this, you must have some examples of this. And he couldn't state any. And I said, well, that, that's kind of strange. Maybe I should keep an eye on this guy. <laughs> and that yeah. basically started Hat City Blog because to me it just didn't seem very credible. His rhetoric, the rhetoric that he was spewing didn't quite match up with any facts. You, usually, you go one, two, three, or one, two, three, four, five. There's something right, right there that this is this is what's driving this, as opposed to just making the statement and right. being political. Yeah, and, and, and even it, what was even funnier is that while this was happening, I didn't see anybody in the media just documenting or taking him, uh, holding him accountable, or asking any tough questions, or just looking into the rhetoric that he was saying. So I said, maybe I should start a website just to keep an eye on this, and more importantly, go down to City Hall, attend these ad hoc committee meetings, attend, attend the land use meetings, because as somebody who's been in Danbury for a very long time, I can remember what, during the previous administration, the News Times would actually go down and cover ad hoc committee meetings. They would cover the land board meetings, and that's where real government happens. You know, when you see a, a condo complex just pop up out of nowhere and people are outraged, they should know that, well, this happened in the planning committee, this happened in the zoning committee, you should direct your attention to there. EIC. And you should know, EIC, you should actually pay attention to what's happening there because that's where real government is happening. And it's interesting, during that time, there was all kinds of opposition. Uh, you know, the government saying it's, it can't be done or whatever uh, to uh, televising the right. Common Council and also the land use boards. Right. And uh, we fought yeah. for a long time, and what's another thing, we fought for a long time to get government programming back on TV because a lot of things are happening under the cloak of darkness and whenever that happens bad things can occur and it's, most of the time they were happening. So we wanted the, 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 the public to be more informed or have an opportunity to see what's happening there and, and unfortunately we still don't have that the way it should be. We still don't see enough land use meetings on TV, like the Zoning Commission and the Planning Commission and EIC and the ad hoc committee meetings, or actually more importantly, the Board of Education meetings, because the city budget, over 50% of the city budget goes towards education. So you probably would, wanna know what's going on in the Board of Ed meetings. It, it would be interesting to see what the Board of Education people are doing how they're holding the superintendent's feet to the fire or whether or not they're letting them go on things. Exactly. You know, because a lot of people think, yeah, there's there's too much there. And any time they talk about cutting the budget, oh, we're taking all the kids' crayons, the crayons away and cutting their sports teams. Right. You know, and uh, there's something wrong with that picture where everybody's got an ass assistant. But anyway, you, you have a, an opinion on journalism in the area, uh, and, and I guess there's a correlation between that and... Uh, government getting away with things in general, yeah. right? Well, it, it, the problem with Danbury, and this is just my the opinion, area, or the greater Danbury area, we, yeah. we used to have papers in this area, such as the Bessel Beacon, that used to follow Bessel politics and Bessel local government. Um, we used to have smaller weekly papers in Danbury. Uh, there used to be a paper in Brookfield that covered just Brookfield news. Nowadays, you don't have those weekly papers that concentrate on what's happening on local government. 
And if, because you don't have that, you have a lack of information. And with a lack of information, you have what's called my, what I call a low information voter. That's very dangerous because what happens, you start voting for politicians, you vote voting for people who are in elected office who are not doing their jobs, who are just out there just giving you rhetoric, but behind the scenes in these meetings, they're not really doing anything for you. And, um, and, and, ba and bad things are happening too. Very bad things are happening. Or people are saying one thing and then not doing another thing, such as, uh, I don't know. You, the latest well, yeah, what are some examples? Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, maybe the fire, the firefighter uh, fighter suit was, uh, you know, it was, was a, a big one. classical one. Yeah, right? we had settlement for over four hundred thousand dollars on top of nearly two hundred thousand dollars in attorney fees. And what was that all about? Well, it was about you know manipulating the list. Manipulating the list. Some people who are on way low on the list were being promoted. Were being promoted while people who are qualified on the list were not being given the jobs. Now, is that there some discretion, though, that the mayor can pick? Some, or was he doing something like instead of picking the top one of the top five, he was going down to number 20? Well, here's the funny thing. Yeah. We still don't know exactly what went on with that. We, we, we heard that, the, that the, the, the city of Danbury finally admitted to some type of wrongdoing, but we don't know the specifics about the wrongdoing because they haven't told us. And the reason why they haven't told us is because the media hasn't been forceful enough to go and say, hey, look, what happened here? We just spent almost a half million dollars in settling this case. Who was the person who did the wrongdoing? Nobody did an and, FOI. And, and, and what's the and what's the remedy in this? Was there any punishment? Is there any way to correct this? What has anything has anything been done to, to you, take care of the situation? What you're saying? Nobody in the media did an FOI. No. Nobody in the media. Done no, FOI. Freedom of freedom of information, information uh, which I've done myself several times. Well, yeah. uh, doing an FOI with the chairman of the uh, Democratic Town Committee. They did an FOI on the legal fees, and we found that almost two hundred thousand dollars in legal fees were done towards this. And that's taxpayers' money, you know, and, and that that can pay for a lot of teachers, especially Yet, when you're manipulating the list, and that's how you lost the two hundred thousand. You know, and, and and there's no accountability to that, and I think that's the, that's that's the responsibility of reporters and journalists to be the watchdogs for for us. You're supposed to ask those tough questions, not let elected officials just get away with this stuff without at least asking tough questions. Now, uh, there, we talked a little bit about the parade ordinance. Uh, could you uh, okay. uh, recap yeah. what well, happened um, with that? Uh, if this, this all started with the World Cup games. Um, you know, they were celebrating, celebrating in the streets back during the World Cup games of 2006. Um, impromptu celebrations, spontaneous celebrations. Certain people in the area didn't like that that was happening. Um, this parade ordinance came as a result of that. Well, the problem with the parade ordinance was it went way too far. First of all, you can't regulate spontaneous celebration. That is protected by the First Amendment. You know, if you and I want to go out and just start jumping up and down and screaming, hey, we had a great show, and we can do that without any, nobody can tell us we can't do this. Um, the parade ordinance says that if you have a group of 25 people or more, and it interferes with pedestrian or vehicular traffic, which means if you have a group of 25 people or more in, in a gathering, on a sidewalk that's interfering with the flow of pedestrian sidewalk, of uh, pedestrian traffic, you need to get a permit for that. Now that seems a little outrageous because you can, you, there's the, the examples of 25 people or more gathering someplace, there's just, you know, there's so many examples of that. Let's say, for instance, you have a history class and you say, well, let's, for the history of Danbury, let's go down to the Danbury Public Library, and let's walk down Main, Main Street from the library down to the Historical Society, and let's look at the history of Danbury on that street. Well, if you have 25 people or more, you need to get a permit for that. That's a little outrageous. That goes beyond the scope of what this ordinance was supposed to be. So to make a long story short, the, the ordinance was passed, but the mayor promised that an ad hoc committee would be established to take a look at the problems with the ordinance. Um, I won't get into all the details of how this ordinance came about in the, in the committee meeting, but to make but, a long story. It, 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 being a former councilman, right. uh, the, the mayor appoints the committee. Right. He picks the chair. Right. It's somebody he likes and somebody that will do what he tells them. Right. So that chair then never has a meeting. Right. Well, the, that's what in fact happened, right? That's in fact that's exactly yeah. what happened. Um, that's the problem with this former government that we have. Yeah, you, you, in you, other you, words, if you had the president of the council appointing the committees, 
Now, the mayor and the council president still could talk, but right. it, it, you don't have that direct deal where the, the mayor is appointing the committees and then they just don't, they just do his bidding. Well, yes, yeah, that's more, yes, yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's the heart of the matter. Yeah. If it was an ad hoc committee, that's something that the mayor really cared about. You can be guaranteed that ad hoc committee would meet immediately and come to some resolution. But in, in, the, in the case of the parade ordinance, the mayor liked the ordinance the way it was. So he just, you know, formed this committee, but nothing ever happened. And then he just dissolved and it. And then it goes away. It just goes away. At the, and, end, and and the end of the year, they dissolve it. just goes away. Yeah. And I think that's unfortunate yeah. because, again, here's another situation where the mayor and the city council are getting away with something that most people don't recognize or understand because it's the media and the reporters are not holding these local elected officials accountable to the things that they're doing. And, and again, you just have a low information voter because they're uninformed about what's happening in their local government. Now, is there something, something new on the Danbury 11 uh, case? Um... Well, it, well, the Danbury 11 case is still, is still proceeding as, as it's proceeding. But so it's still going through the courts, even still though it's going been a while. Courts, but there's been a lot of developments in that in, in which people need to understand something. When that whole case, when that whole particular incident happened, the mayor said that the city, the city played no role whatsoever in that raid. No role whatsoever. Can you give us a recap of that for those that weren't around? Well, um, real briefly, uh, there were day laborers down at Kennedy Park, right. and what happened was is that um, agents for ICE um, went undercover and drove a van down to Kennedy Park to pick up people, undocumented immigrants, or I shouldn't say undocumented because we don't know whether or not they're undocumented or, or undocumented, but picked up people who wanted to work. And after they picked them up, they brought them down to the police station and arrested them. Um, that's basically what the Danbury 11, that's in a nutshell what the Danbury 11 case is all about. Um, what has transpired from that is a, a civil lawsuit in which the, the plaintiffs are saying that their civil rights were being violated. And what we're saying, and what I am saying, is that I'm not necessarily keeping an eye on, that, on the, the particulars of the case, I'm just keeping an eye on what the statements from our local officials from that time period, from that time period what they said. I and mean, again, they said that city police had played no part in that role. Well, now we found out years later that, well, of course we played a role. A Danbury police officer was a person driving the van. And if a Danbury police officer was driving the van, this raid happened at 6 o'clock in the morning, well, there was prior planning because you don't, ICE is not going to come down here at 4 o'clock in the morning and say, hey, look, you know, hey, Danbury cop, let's get you in a plain clothes and we'll go out in a couple of hours and pick up some, you know, some people on, the, on, on Kennedy Avenue. There was prior planning into this. So we were told one thing, but, but now we find out a lot more information about this. And again, the result of this is this case has been in the courts for a very long time. A lot of attorney fees is coming out of this, and there might be a settlement in this. We're wasting, we're, we're going to pay out a lot of money due in large part from elected officials not being truthful about what happened in this particular case from the get-go. And I think that's very important to people to keep an eye on because immigration is a very sensitive issue in this area and our mayor has drummed things up and put Danbury in the headlights of looking like a xenophobic city. And it's I already driven many of them that were here anyway. Right. You know, there's all kinds of empty apartments where there used to be people all over the place. You know, and, and, and <laughs> heaven forbid, heaven forbid yeah. if an organization would speak up against this individual, against the mayor or against the city hall, they'll get their funding, uh, get their funding cut off. But you know, it, it, it's, it's funny that he would, you know, say certain things and when you try to hold him accountable for his words, he'll just spin it. But unfortunately, we have a local media again that, you know, well, they don't do their jobs in terms of holding this guy accountable. He said that city of Danbury played no part in this raid, and an undercover Danbury police officer drove the van. But you don't hear anything about that in the That New was Times. supposed to be an entire federal operation. Right. Yeah. Well, because at that time, we didn't have 287G, and it's illegal for city, of, uh, city uh, cops to enforce immigration law. And that's a serious problem because, again, Shouldn't the public know about these things? It's just, you know, it's our taxpayers' dollars at work here, and we're, we're not being properly informed about well, what's happening. Well, they're not going to be working for us if they're going to the, to the plaintiffs. Right. You know, because the, they, were, they did participate, and uh, they weren't supposed to. Right, exactly. Right. Now, we have the, the recent occurrence of the uh, police station uh, sale, which I found some problems with also. Uh, tell us the facts of the case well, there. Uh, the, the, the recent police station. Uh, yes, yeah, the, the, the old police the station. The old police station. The old police station. My main issue with this 
It's that, um, and to the chairperson of the Dem Democratic Town Committee's credit, she did a letter to the editor and tried to inform people about this. This is a one-shot revenue deal that this mayor is trying to use in order to use towards this current budget, but the sale hasn't gone through yet. So, you know, if the sale doesn't go through, if he doesn't get the, enough, the money that he's expecting to get, he's got to go into the contingency fund to take care of his budget. Well, basically, you're spending money that you don't have. So and, he's and already got, problem. he's got this police station sale already in the budget. Already in the budget, and he has to get this thing sold by the end of this current budget year, or else he has a Which problem. Which is June 30th. June 30th. Right. Of course, you have a problem. Now, that's a one-shot revenue deal. And we have Republicans who were crying and, and, and criticizing the Obama administration, and I think they called it Obama bucks, yeah. for giving stimulus money out for these, you know, well, he's giving out stimulus money and wasting our money on these things. Well, the mayor is actually doing the same type of thing. He's doing these one-shot revenue deals for his budget. Well, what happens next year? <laughs> you won't have that money next year, so how are you going to handle that? You know, let's say this thing is like $2 million for this. I don't know. I can't give you the exact number. Let's just say, for instance, it's $2 million the city is going to get from the sale of this property. Well, what's going to happen next year with your budget when you don't have the $2 million? Where are you going to find the $2 million in that budget to take well, care of that situation? Well, well, then the taxes go up. The taxes go up. Yeah. You know, on top of the assessments that are going to be done pretty soon, on top of the, all, all the other nonsense that's going on. Taxes are going to go up. So there isn't a, any reporting on this, is what you're saying. There's not enough good reporting on this where... People need to be explained about what's happening here. These, these one-shot deals, but the only instance of me learning about the one-shot deal was a letter to the editor. You don't have a reporter going out there and explaining about what's happening and how this money's being used. Uh, there was a, a city council member who questioned the mayor about this, but you didn't see that question posed by the city council member mentioned in the News Times articles. And I think that's a serious problem, again, because when you have low-information voters, they make unwise decisions. And it's not entirely their fault, but they're not being given the proper information to make the proper decision about who they want to have in, in, in office. And I think this current mayor has done a, a lot of very serious critical errors that has cost the city a lot of money that's been going below the radar. And I guess you want to talk a little more about ICE. Uh, this is some uh, well, other burning uh, things l lately. Are we still going? Uh, well, it, it, it's it's always going to be burning. Uh, I, I think the ICE access the 287G program was an unneeded program. The the, the, the program that was not uh, requested by the police department. It was requ it, 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 the, the origins of this ICE access fiasco came from the city council members. So it was, already it was already political because it came from city council members. Law enforcement did never asked for this thing. And what we were told during the whole ICE access debate was that, well, 287G will not be used for raids. It will be not be used for sweeps. And it won't, won't be used for things that, you know, and if anybody's saying that, well, they're being wrong. They're, they're, it's outrageous for them to say something like that. We're not going to do this. We're going to use this for A, B, and C. Well. Last month, we just basically had an immigration raid sweep happen in this area where we picked up a no where we picked up a number of immigrants who were under, I guess you know they had basically charges on them. But we picked up a lot of other people. It's called collateral arrest. You know, you might have one person that they, you have a deportation uh, charge against. And you go and get him, but in the process of getting that one individual, you'll get everybody in the place. You know, it had nothing to do with this, but you're just going to grab them anyway. You want to question them and make sure that you want to check their immigration status, things of that nature. And those individuals are scared because they don't know what's going on. There's a police officer in your face saying, hey, I want these questions with your ID. You don't know. You can just keep your mouth shut. You, know, you don't have to do these things. But, you know, things happen. Um, it, it, and I'm, I'm sure I would do the same thing if a police officer was in my face. But to make a long story short, we were told that this program was not, was not going to be used for those type of instances, and there's been no transparency in terms of this program. We don't know anything about this program. We still don't even know how much this program has cost the city of Danbury over the years. And I think during this current economic climate, we should have a better idea about how much this program is, being, is costing the city of Danbury, and is it really being effective? And we're not being told that, and more importantly, the media is not asking those questions for us. And I think that's a serious problem. Yeah, it's like the Everything is silently going on behind the scenes till we got a problem, and then we lose another half million dollars or whatever. Right. And, and again, yeah. it's 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 not 
the public's fault. It's a responsibility for the media to be the watchdog for the public. They're supposed to go out there and ask those tough questions because that's what they're supposed to do. But, but if it's going down and newspapers are declining to the point where uh, they're going out of business or they're a, a shadow of what they used to be, uh, then who's going to do it except for bloggers like yourself? Right. Citizen journalists have to pick up the slack for, for areas where, you know, fill in the gaps where these, re, these newspapers are not doing their jobs. One of the, things I, one of the first things I did with Hat City Blog was, um, since I did a lot of videotaping with my other websites, I made it a responsibility, I took a responsibility upon myself to go down to City Hall and just prop up a video camcorder and record the entire meetings from beginning to end. And I usually did that for city council meetings at first until I found out, for the most part, that city council meetings are basically a dog and pony show. Everything happens during the caucus. That's, what, that's the meat and potatoes, or everything happens during ad hoc committee meetings. Did you find out what I found out a long time ago? What's that? Uh, it's just, uh, I don't know if it's still going on, but initially they were getting slips of paper about who was going to make the motion, who was going to make the second. <laughs> they, that's why the, the first couple of years, it, it seems, that's where they it operated. It seems very scripted. I mean, yeah. the mayor doesn't even raise his head. He'll just, you know, pick somebody and then, you know, people he'll, are he'll, picking. He won't look down the dais. He just, I've seen him on TV. He'll go, uh, councilman, whatever. And, yeah. uh, and then he, he, he then he'd take it from there and... No, you know, a second, it, uh, right away, and boom. You know. it, it, He's not even looking because he looking. knows it's, who they are. Yeah, again, it's, it's, it's yeah. the dog and pony show. So what I, want, what, I, what I decided to do instead of just following the city council meetings was like, look, that's not where all the action's happening at. I found out real quick that if you want to know what's happening in the city of Danbury, you go to the ad hoc committee meetings and you definitely go to the land board meetings. That's where, that's where the rubber hits the road. It's in those land uh, use meetings. Okay, so what you're saying, because they're under... Uh, they're not watched, in, right. in effect, the land right. use. That that is where a lot of these things that people get outraged. Oh yeah. Six months down the road, hey, what happened? Oh, they they handled that three months ago, or <laughs> yeah. they handled that six months yeah. ago. It, it's and too, you mean this is getting built over here? How did that happen? <laughs> and, and it's too late because the yeah. public hearing is closed. You can't offer an opinion anymore. And um, yeah. you know, so whether it's the um, but aren't they supposed to get notification to all of the uh, neighbors? Well, you might get notice to the neighbors, but that's within a, a certain area where that thing's actually being affected. But these land, these things that are happening on the land use affects the entire city of Danbury. You know, um, condos all Do you have, do you have any specifics like uh, EIC uh, things? Or, uh, well, I, I think a couple of things that, that, that have interest me was the, the whole Sonic restaurant that's happening over on Newtown Road. With all the, the amount of traffic that's happening over in that area, for them to put a Sonic over in that spec discounts parking lot where and the details of this is astonishing where they'll they'll allow traffic to queue up all the way around the express discounts building loops all the way around you know people need to be informed about that you mean they're putting another building in that same lot or in, is in, it in or, that parking lot where spec yeah. discounts is at there's going to be a sonic restaurant right there in that parking lot how are they doing that what, putting another building there well you should go to the land use meetings <laughs> You know, you should check those things out. Yeah, that's so and, and on, on top of the, and, and you know Newtown Road during certain times of the day, the traffic is, is astonishing. You know, but they're putting another restaurant there. And, and, and I think people should be informed about that because, you know, traffic is a major problem in Danbury. Major problem. You go down Mill Plain Road, where we're giving all the promises during the 90s that you're, you're going to expand Mill Plain Road. That hasn't happened. But you have this overdevelopment it's like, in that it's, area. It's like a parking lot now. It's like a parking lot. Yeah. And I call it irresponsible development, where you, where developers are just coming up and either putting up condos or trying to get these, these, these buildings done in irresponsible areas, and the people are not informed about this. And then it, they don't know anything about what happens until after the fact, like the BRT uh, development over on Hospital Avenue. That you know nobody knew anything about it until the blasting happened, and they're like, "Hey, what's going on? What's going on, on here? here? We can't believe this. Well, yeah, my windows happen? just blew out." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so I think yeah. it's important to go to these land use meetings because that's again, that's where the rubber hits the road. You know, people want their potholes paved. They want to make you know people want to know um, if my, if my child's getting a good education, and they want to know if there's going to be a condo put up next to their home because what? they're going to devalue the place. Y you mentioned BRT, but you forgot the other building downtown. They got the, the, the BRT built. 
that yeah. was originally going to be college dorms or whatever. First, well, they were going to be apartments. Yeah, apartments then then, then they became college dorms college for the dorms. college, uh, but they uh, they got a tax exemption right. on there. So that uh, a, a seven-year tax deal. And again, this was this was this was done for the most part. The public didn't know about this, and they should be outraged about this. I would be outraged about this. No taxes for seven years no to build something. No taxes for seven years, and you turn it into a college dorm. And if you know yeah. anything about college dorms. A one-bedroom college dorm can hold two individuals, but those two individuals are paying full rent. <laughs> so the guy right. is making off like a bandit on not, these rooms. And not paying any taxes. And not paying any taxes. And on, on, on the flip side, if you go down to Kennedy Avenue, the old Antonal building, it's just a, a pile of rubble to this day. They, and, they got an exemption also. And I got an exemption but, also. But they, uh, the, and nothing's he, ever built there. And he, and he said he can't take care of the road because of the economic times, and he, he doesn't have the money or whatever. And I'm like, well, wait a second. You had, a, you had enough money to blast Hospital Avenue, and you can't get rid of your garbage? There's an eyesore on Kennedy? He, he, he used the, uh, uh, the, the federal dollars to pave the road on, on the outside there. Well, it's just, yeah. it's just <laughs> it, again, it's just these types of things that are happening in our local government, whether it's land use boards, ad hoc committees, or, or the Board of Education, it's not being reported enough in our current media. And it needs to be because, again, this is our taxpayer dollars. We should know about what's going on with our money, how is it being used, and who are making these decisions that many of these decisions people in, in the end don't like. Now, Al, what's, uh, what's the name of your blog again? Uh, and, uh, my where's... blog is called Hat City Blog. Is at www.hatcityblog.com. I also um, have a blog um, linked up with the News Times website. But for the most part, I'm just a lone man out there with a camera and an attitude. <laughs> I just go and I just report on what's happening. And can you train other people to have cameras and attitudes also? I tell you, I, I <laughs> encourage I encourage people to go out and do this. I don't care about your political persuasion. I don't care if you're a Republican or Democrat, conservative or liberal or progressive. You should just go out and just learn about what's happening in your own community. I, I get tired to hear people always talk about national issues and like, oh, Obama this or Sarah Palin that. I'm like, look, it's irrelevant what happens out there in Washington. The only thing you should care about is what's happening right here in your community because that's where you can make the greatest impact. Is All on politics. Local. It's local. Yeah. It's local. And I'm telling you, if you get out there and make a stink about something, something can change. They're telling me to get Oh, okay. All right. I want to thank you for coming on the show. Thanks a lot again. I, I'm okay. so happy I'm here. <laughs> and I want to thank the viewers for tuning in to the Community Forum. Tune in next week, same time, same station. I'm sure we'll have another interesting program. Good night for now, and we'll see you then.